one of the things that doctors do when they go when you go into a doctor's office and you talk about elbow pain or wrist pain or something like that that's something that they commonly feel for is your radial head which is what this is called What's up, YouTube? It's your girl TK, and welcome back to Spilling the Bible of Tea. And today we're back with another lesson on our bones lecture. We'll be getting into all other things bone related, but before we get into all the content that I know you are dying to hear about, make sure you like the video, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, make sure you comment down below. And let me know all the things, all the content that you enjoy throughout the video. Make sure you go ahead and share so your friends know that there is content out here to help them with all things biology related. And make sure you hit that post notification bell so you know every single time I'm uploading. So, before we get into the video, and before we get into all the content I know you guys are here to see, we're going to make sure we cleanse our energies because you know that's how we do over here. So as I burn the sage, let's just take three deep breaths, three deep mindful breaths. our energy and our spirits are clean. Let's go ahead and get this kettle hot. All right, so this is the second video in our bones unit, and today we're going to be covering all things related to the anatomy of the long bone and the short bone, what the histology of the bone looks like, some of the bone markings that are popular or common on different types of bones, and a few bones that I think would be helpful for you guys to know that will be useful as we continue on. This group of vocab that we have are the vocab related to our anatomy. And it's actually the physical anatomy of the bone. So that's the metaphysis, diaphysis, epiphysis. Um, we also have the medullary cavity, the periosteum, the articular cartilage, and the epiphyseal plate. These are all the anatomy words related to specifically like the bone anatomy. They're parts of the bones that I actually be able to physically show you, or um, if I like slice the bone in half, you would be able to see them. And then we have all the words that are related to the histology of the bone. So you have the osteon, lacunae, um, osteocytes, medullary cavity, osteoblasts are also related to the osteocytes, and we'll get into that as well. The colliculi um, the, and the central canal. That's all the words I, I can think of right now. If something else comes up, of course, we'll touch on it as we get into some of those histology-related concepts. So that's kind of the vocab that we'll be going over today and i'll go into depth about what each of these pieces are it's not really so much so a storyline on this it's more or less me just showing you the pieces of the bone and just getting a good idea of what everything looks like there's the three categories that your bones typically fall in as far as um what they look like they'll typically be in your regular bone so something that doesn't really have a shape um what we call a short bone which is one of these little bones right up in here in the middle of your foot. Really short, as you can see, it's pretty compact. And then we have long bones, which are like these bones, which are like your legs, your arms, the body, your extremities are long bones. Um, and then we also have flat bones, which I don't have any flat bones with me right now, My, um, but you can think of the skull as a flat bone. Most people know what the skull looks like, but it's pretty flat on the inside. And that's why we call that a flat bone because it is flat so that's kind of the different categories that we put bones into oh we also have sesamoid bones sesamoid bone, bones i don't really have an example of what that would look like in it so that you can understand the context of what it is but a sesamoid bone a sesamoid bone is basically the bone that's like your kneecap is your best example that you can think of or your big toe basically what it means is that it's a bone that's encapsulated with well, encapsulated really isn't a good word. I would say it's surrounded by tendon. So there'll be a bone, like when you think about your knee, you have the bone right in the middle, and then on top of the bone, the top and bottom pieces of the bone, there's a tendon on the top and the bottom connecting it to the bones. Um, well, there's a ligament, sorry, not so much a tendon, um, connecting it to the other bones. So that's the first part. 
So now we'll kind of go into the specific bone anatomy. Um, and mainly this bone anatomy only really relates to long bones because you see these don't really have the same shape. And these don't really have, and irregular bones don't really have a shape at all. So you don't really have specific orientation for how all of them work. But long bones, all of them look the same. That is, this is these ends are called the epiphysis of the bone. So this is, um, these are pretty important areas of the bone. We'll get to them in later lectures um, regarding like what the major function is but here. Mainly your um, epiphysis is going to play a big role with your growth is what we'll talk about the epiphysis um, a lot. And then speaking of the epiphysis, right beside the epiphysis is a part that you can't really see on the inside of the bone, but it is right here. It is called the epiphysial plate. Inside the bone is a part of cartilage that kind of separates the um, the um, epiph um, epiphysis from the diaphysis. So this is what we call the diaphysis, the shaft of the bone. And then in between the epiphysis and the diaphysis, we have the metaphysis. So the epiphysial plate is found in the metaphysis. So how I remember these words is I think of when I think of epi, epi is typically the most outside portion of something, the most further, the furthest away. So like I said in, pre, in the last video that I posted, prefixes will save your life in biology. So if you remember the prefixes, it will help you. So epi, anytime you see epi, you know, I already know it's the outside, the outermost. So epiphysis, the outside, the outermost part of the bone, the lateral parts that you come to. And then you get the metaphysis, meta. When I think meta, I always think middle, or I think transformation, like you know, in the, like in the process of so meta, like in the process of transformation, you're trans transitioning from the epiphysis to the diaphysis. And then the diaphysis, I just remember this because it's the only one left. Um, and if you can remember the epiphysis and the metaphysis, you can remember that diaphysis is in the middle. So now we're going to like the outside. So on the end down here, this is where your cartilage is typically found. So this, all the ends of your bones are gonna have cartilage so they can move around smoothly. So like I said, this is your arm. So this is, this ball right here goes into your shoulder. So for your shoulder to move around smoothly and for it not to have any pain and rubbing and rough edges, it needs cartilage. The cartilage that covers the end of this bone is called articular cartilage. So the articular cartilage is used to make sure that the articulation or the coming together of those two bones is smooth, not rough. We don't want anything to be rough because if it's rough, it's going to cause pain. That's when you get things like osteoarthritis and things like that happening and you get that rubbing together and it's not comfortable at all. So that cartilage really smooths it out and makes it pleasant for you to walk and move your arms and shoulders and things like that because it allows for that smooth smooth surface. So that's the articular cartilage. The last part we have um, on the outside is the, outside of the markings is the periosteum. So the periosteum is typically goes down the shaft of the bone and it's typically also cartilage on the outside. So the periosteum is really just there, you know, for protection of the bone and it's just that outside layer of cartilage. The periosteum right along the inside layer of the periosteum, you always have stem cells living there, which are called osteoblasts that are ready to make new bone whenever you need it. They're, they're ready to make that new bone for whenever you're, for instance, whenever you're working out in the gym and you're increasing your weights and you're continuing to feel stronger, your bones have to compensate for that. So the last major piece that we need to talk about is the medullary cavity. It is a part that you cannot see right now. It's the way the bone looks, but it's inside the diaphysis of the bone. The medullary cavity is full of spongy bone, which we'll talk about momentarily, but it is the location in the bone where we make a lot of our bone set, our, our blood cells, to allow for us to continuously have the blood supply that we need to be able to do the plethora of things that we do with our blood. So here we're gonna be talking about what bone cells look like underneath the microscope. Bone cells are very unique underneath the microscope. Bone cells are the one cells I can see underneath the microscope and automatically know what they look like. I automatically know what they look like because bone is the only connective tissue that is made up of a calcified matrix. So it's very hard 
So it looks very different than every other bone. I mean, than every other connective tissue. So the way bone cells start, typically in the middle of your bone cell, you're gonna have something that's called a central canal. So blood vessel lives in the central canal. It comes up the central canal and provides blood to the bone tissue or the osseous tissue so that it can continue to grow because nothing is gonna grow without nutrients and without being able to get rid of waste. So that's what the central canal is. The central canal is that location for your blood vessel to sit. So from the central canal, you then start to see these layers, these concentric layers just going around and around and around. They get wider and wider, you get one, they get bigger and bigger. So those concentric layers, everything put together, that is called an osteon. All those layers put together. Osteon could be 10 layers, but it's just that, or five layers, or it's just, it's just that whole circle, that continuous circle that keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. That is your osteon. So you'll see in the circles that each one of the circles You'll see as you go around the circle, there's a little black, there's like a black dot. There are multiple black dots along the circles. Those black dots are called lacunae. The lacunae are where the osteocytes live. But just know for right now, just know that osteoclasts are basically the mature storage related bone cells. They're the bone cells that are there waiting for if anything's needed, if, bones, if bone cells are needed, they're the cells that are there waiting for any instruction when instruction can be given. So your osteocytes are sitting in little, almost like little nests that we call lacunae. So those lacunae have like little spiderweb legs that shoot out from them. And those little spiderweb legs that shoot out from them are called colliculi. So the colliculi is what allows for the blood to get to the osteocytes. It allows for in the waste to leave the osteocyte and go into the bloodstream. So that's basically what the histology looks like. Not really much to it. It's pretty easy to identify um, bone histology. But I did, because we're going to be talking about cartilage throughout this unit, I did want to go ahead and hit on cartilage histology. The first is fibrocartilage. Fibrocartilage is the cartilage that we typically see that is in our skeletal that is in our skeleton, which is protecting our, um, in our skeleton, in the area that is protecting our spinal cord. Cartilage is a cartilage that is very fibrous. So that is the major thing you're looking for when you look at the histology of fibrocartilage, is you're looking for a ton of fibers flowing through it. You'll see a ton of lines and things like that, fibers actually flowing through the cartilage. And it has a good structure to it. So you can see why those will be the ones that will be in our vertebral column holding everything together because they have a nice firm structure. These are different from the cartilage that is at the ends of your long bones, which is higher than cartilage. It kind of looks like, they kind of look like eggs um throughout the cartilage and your hyaline cartilage is a lot clearer doesn't really have any fibers in it it's literally just the cells in a clear brown substance versus your elastic cartilage which is your stretchier cartilages like this cartilage that will be in your ears so that your ears fold or like in the ends of your nose so that your nose kind of wiggles those cartilage that cartilage is your elastic cartilage those also look like eggs yes yeah, so your elastic cartilage is your stretchy cartilage it's the cartilage that can go back to shape after it changes its shape um, and that cartilage um, is actually going to have fibers in it as well those fibers are a little bit more haphazard don't really have much organization to them so I almost kind of think of elastic cartilage is almost kind of like the marriage between your fiber cartilage and your hyaline cartilage because you get the egg shapes that you get from the hyaline cartilage with the fibers that you have from the fiber cartilage but the fibers are a little bit more haphazard and not quite as organized so you can kind of put those three cartilages into categories to kind of help you to identify which ones are which and what makes the most sense. So because I use this video as an opportunity to talk about the histology between the bones and the cartilage, I also want to talk about a major difference between bones and cartilage that is going to come up in the next video. So we're going to be talking about bone growth in the next video. So because of that, I want to tell you a little bit of the differences between the way that bones grow and the way that cartilage grows. That vocab is hyperplasia versus hypertrophy. Those are the two different ways that tissues in the body grow. Hyperplasia is when growth happens by way of the increase in cell number. So the number of cells are growing. So you'll go from having four cells to having eight cells to having 16 cells to having 32 cells and so on. That is how 
the cell grows versus hypertrophy where the cells don't grow in number they just get larger so good examples of this are when you think of your muscles your muscles do not get do not replace themselves they do not grow in number they do not multiply and make more and more and more and more and more of them which is why it's so important if you get like heart issues if you have heart failure if you have heart disease it's one of those things that we very much so push because the heart is a muscle it does not multiply it just grows so because of that you can't replace it so it's the same way with all of your muscles in your body all of the muscles in your body just grow by way of hypertrophy they get bigger and how you can remember that is trophies are big when you get a trophy you want a big trophy so you know that the thing is growing by way of getting bigger because it is a trophy hyperplasia on the other hand is how your bones grow so your bones grow by hypertrophy they multiply and make more and more and more and more and more of them so that the two major things i want you to know i said muscles but another example is also cartilage cartilage grows by way of hypertrophy so that'll come in play again like i said in the next video we'll talk about how that really plays a, a huge role well, not the next video but in this series we'll talk about how the way that the two different things grow play a major role in the progress and in what's happening in the bone as it develops so just make sure you keep those in mind the difference between hyperplasia and hypertrophy and that cartilage grows by way of hypertrophy and that bones grow by way of hyperplasia making sure you know these two um, different things will kind of help you understand what's going on when we get to bone development okay so the last part of the video that i want to talk about is just some different bones that we have that are commonly seen so we're going to start with the arm first so the first bone in the arm that we're going to go over is the humerus so one of the major things that helps me remember and identify the humerus is the bottom of it and the sides so you can see that this is a long bone um and it's a long bone that has a hook and once we get to the bottom half of the arm, this will be a signifier for you. I'll show you guys how this makes sense. Um, but yeah, it's a long bone and the head is here. It doesn't have a long neck. It has some grooves at the top where some muscles um, attach. They kind of help me to identify it as well. Um, so that is the major thing with the humerus. So now continuing down the arm, we have oops, we have the radius and the ulna. So major way I remember the radius is that the radius is um, related to circle anatomy when we're talking about math and like circles, geometry, and this has a circle on the end of it. So that helps me remember the radius because I remember that it's the only bone that has a circle or like almost a perfect circle at the end of it so that makes me remind reminds me that radius is related to the the bone that has a circle on the end and then the radius always goes with the ulna and the ulna how i remember it is this um this little hook right here it's called the olecranon and the olecranon notch which is down here which is why i say this little notch down here i help you remember that this is the humerus because this is where that electron goes, which this one I don't think is the right one for the right arm, but you kind of get the idea that it goes right in there and it allows for it to um, hook in and allow for that elbow movement to happen. And then in this little groove right here, that little groove right there, that's where the radius would go. So you have your ulna right up in there and then your radius right beside it. And if you actually feel, side of your arm right on the back side and kind of twist your hand like that it takes a very fine hump and hand medical school taught me this one but you can kind of feel that radius popping in and out of the arm right there uh, if you hold right there you can kind of feel it um, which is pretty cool and that's one of the things that doctors do when they go when you go into a doctor's office and you talk about elbow pain or wrist pain or something like that that's something that they commonly feel for is your radial head which is what this is called the radial head to see if you have any dysfunction or if it's not moving the way that it should. So those are the bones of the arm, the radius, the ulna, and the humerus. So just remember those couple of things and also remember the humerus because the humerus is a part of what we call the quote unquote funny bone, which is what you hit down here. Um, it's at that joint of the humerus and the um, 
in the ulna, the funny bone. So that's kind of how I remember that the humerus is in the arm because it's a part of the funny bone and humerus kind of sounds like humor. So that's kind of how I remember those. Let's move on into the legs. Other bones that are super common and um, important, helpful for you to know. This is our femur. So how I always remember the femur is that the femur has a crazy neck. This right here is what we call the neck and this is the head. The same way that this was the head and this is what we call the surgical neck and this is what we call the actual neck because this little part right here, right here, this little line on the side would be the equivalent to this. So we call both this little line right here or right here where you see that tube label, that is called the neck just as well as this is called the neck. But where that 16 is on here, you can see that, that is the surgical neck. If you were to have an issue with your humerus, that's the most likely place for it to break. So that's why it has that name of the surgical neck because if it was gonna break, that'd be the most likely place to happen and you didn't get surgery. So that's why it's called the surgical neck versus the actual neck. This right here is the, ash, is the neck here and the femur doesn't have a surgical neck because it actually has a neck and then this is called the head. Um, so yeah, this is the femur. Major differences in the humerus is the size, of course, the fact that one, this one has a neck and this one doesn't really have a neck. Um, but some things that it has in common is that they have um, these feet on the bottom. These feet on the bottom are what we call condyles and epicondyles. So I always remember that the ends of my long bones are called condyles and epicondyles. When we get down to these, they're called something slightly different. These bones, the ones that are on the bottom that connect to like your feet and your hands, they're called something ever slightly different, but they look different than these. So that's what helps you to kind of identify that. And that these do look similar. So the whole thing, the whole side is called a condyle. Whole side is called a condyle, but like the part on the top, like so, like this would be called the epicondyle, and this would be called the epicondyle, and that would be called the epicondyle, and that would be called the epicondyle. It's like if you remember, it's the furthest most part, the part that's out there. So this would be the furthest most part out. This would be the furthest most part that's out. So that's why they're called the epicondyle. But the whole side is the condyle. So you have the condyle, and then like the edge of the condyle would be what epi would be referring to. So those two major markings or major markings that will help you in identifying these and then the difference between your humerus and your femur. Last two bones I'm going to go over before I go over so some markings are the bottom of the leg. So this is your tibia, which is pretty easy for me to remember because the top of this is called the tibial plateau because it's flat. Um, so then I can remember that this is the tibia and then this is called the fibula. It's the tibia and the fibula um and this kind of goes right into if you see this little sliver this little smooth part right here that is where this fibula um it would slide right in right there they're called malleolus that's what they're called malleolus um and you have a lateral one the medial one and the lateral one is the one that's your fibula and your medial one is the one that's your tibia so your, your fibula is always on the outside of your leg. It's always on the outside part. So, excuse my socks, y'all. Excuse my Ricky, Mor my Ricky Morty socks. I anticipate y'all seeing my leg. But this side is always where your fibula is. It's always on the outside. And this is always your tibia, okay? The same way that on your hand, um, your humerus is always at the top. And then your radius is always on your pinky side and i mean on your thumb side and your ulna is always on your pinky side so how i remember that is your radius is like right your right do a good job so you throw your thumb up so i remember that and then pinky with um the pinky with the ulna is probably the easier way to remember is pu stinks so pu pinky ulna it's kind of it's how i remember those things so just so you can remember what side they are and the orientation to kind of give you an idea. As you can see, um, we kind of have some general names that we talked about, the head, 
the neck so the ends of everything is always a head and you always have a neck right underneath your head the same way you have a head and a neck in your body so that's always pretty easy for you to remember um the ends of your wrists are called styloids while the ends of your legs are called malleoluses um but they're both lateral and medial they work the same way so the side that's the, that's the closest when in anatomical position the side that is closest to the body, side closest to the trunk, is the medial side. So that would be your ulna on the medial side. Radial side is your lateral side, the side that is furthest out. So um, there are a lot of markings on these bones. I'm not going to go over like tubercles and tuberosities and things like that, which are what these are at the top and what this is up here. Just know that when you look at a bone, and you see all these numbers I have on this bone. Those are different things I had to know from medical school. Even this one on the top, this is the deltoid tuberosity. But just know, these are different places where your bones attach most of the time. These different grooves aren't there for no reason. So just remember that and know that when you're learning it in school, you're not learning it for no reason. You're learning it because the bone, this bone and, this, and the bone next to it allow for two other muscles to attach. That is what then allows for that muscle to move, for instance. This is an attachment location for your deltoid. And remember, this is the muscle, the bone that is right here. So that deltoid attaches there, which would be the equivalent of about right here on my arm so that I can make this motion. So each one of these grooves and things like this are super important. Pro tip is learning them slowly but surely over time. It helps you just repetition 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 that's the big thing with bones especially with bone markings it's just repetition 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 it's the only way that's really effective to learn it so i would highly suggest getting some flashcards, getting some quizlet cards finding some different apps or things like that that you can download to just help you um remember that is the gist of this video i just want to make sure you guys have a good idea of bone anatomy what the bone looks like how it functions well, not necessarily how it functions, but what the bone looks like, what the different parts of the bone are, um, and what that histology looks like so that we can continue to build on that knowledge and you can continue to feel comfortable with the bone content. So, with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it, was able to get a, a better understanding of just the bone anatomy and bone histology. Next video, we'll be diving into the different bone cells. And then after that, we'll be diving into bone development and how exactly that works in bone remodeling and how that functions. So I'll see you in the next video. Again, like I said, you're gonna make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and then share this video so that all your friends can find me and get that help they need with all their biology.